Hi guys, marhaba, this is Shariq again and welcome back to Globetrot with Arabic. It's going to be a Lebanese Arabic lesson dedicated to my Lebanese Arabic students. Um, before I begin, let me as usual ask you to subscribe to my channel if you've been finding my lessons useful. Also follow me on Facebook and on Instagram because after our lessons I try to go there and upload lists of vocab, sentences and phrases we do in our YouTube lessons. So if you don't want to miss out on any information, you can also follow me at, at Globetrot with Arabic. Um, this is going to be not a continuation uh, really exactly of the two previous lessons, but if you want to find out more why we are doing this lesson, you can go to uh, the links that I will leave in the description box after I finish this live, uh, because this, the sentences that I got some of them are from the previous conversation that we did and um, we will learn how to say it's been, it's been a while and I've been in some context. We will use these uh, sentences um, to, um, once again, let me just change my image here. Uh, da -da -da. One second. I'm used to using um, Word and today I'm using my image, so bear with me just a second. So, basically, we will start by looking at this sentence here, the last sentence of our previous conversation, okay? If you don't understand it 100%, it has a lot of details, so make sure to check the links before. But you can still follow this lesson even if you haven't seen the first two lessons. Let's begin. Okay, so the final sentence was, Okay, okay, خلصنا بقى تنزير ليك مين عم بيحكي؟ so, okay, okay, خلاص تنزير means, okay, all right, enough giving advice. Well, as I explained before, tanzir comes from the word nazari, and nazari is a theory. So, when you say to someone, enough tanzir, خلاص بقى تنزير, it's like you are literally telling them, enough theorizing, which means in a way you're telling them stop giving me a lot of advice but in an annoying way, um, stop maybe monitoring me or something, okay? Especially if the person themselves, they don't follow this advice and they try to tell you what, the, what to do when they don't do it. So, خلصنا بقى تنزير لك مين عم بيحكي look who's talking Now, this is the part that we will do today we will do today إلك or إلك شهر يا بالبيجاما يا بالسوفيتمان So we mentioned the last time that we say يا and يا as a way to say uh, uh, either or So in English you say either or But in Arabic we say يا and يا So it's the same word that we are using So إلك شهر It's been one month for you That you are يا بالبيجاما Either in your pyjamas or in your um, tracksuit So the structure that we will learn today is this ilik or ilak. When do you do when do you use it and why? So ilak shahar. If we take ilak comes from standard Arabic, which is leka or leki. Literally for you masculine, for you feminine. In Lebanese Arabic, we pronounce it as ilak or ilik. So you're literally saying for you masculine. And for you, feminine. Here, when I say, إلك شهر, literally, what we are saying is, for you, one month. Which means, it's been one month for you that you are either in your PJs or in your um, uh, tracksuit. So, the way you say it in English is usually, it's been one month that you're doing this, or it's been one month that he's doing this, it's been one month that I'm doing this. But in Arabic, what you are saying is, it's been one month for you, it's been one month for him, it's been one month for me. And that's why we are using this ilak here. So firstly, let's look at how we conjugate ilak or ilik. So ili, that's for me, literally. Ilak, for you, masculine. Ilik, for you, feminine, elo for him. And you notice here I'm writing the H, but we don't really pronounce the H in Lebanese. We pronounce it just as a O, elo, elo. And here you can put a domma on the lamb, elo. Ela, again, we're not pronouncing the H here, the ha, ela. It's not ilha, it's ela. 
إلنا it's for us إلكن for you plural and إلن again without pronouncing the ها it's not إلهن it's إلن of course if you say إلهن it's not wrong but we tend to pronounce it in Lebanese without the ها so إلي for me إلك for you masculine إليك for you feminine إلو for him إلا for her إلنا for us إلكن for you plural and إلون for them but today the sentences that we will use the first few sentences that we will use we will not use these to mean for me, for you, for her we, we will use them to mean it's been for example like it's been a while I haven't seen you uh, it's been two months that I am at home Okay, so we will use them as, as in it's been and I've been. So now that we know how to conjugate the ele elak elik, let's go to the list of sentences that I prepared so that we can check uh, each example. And I try to give you as many examples as possible, specifically uh, of those that we really use a lot when it comes to Lebanese Arabic. So let's look at our first sentence here, which is ele se'a natrak. إلي ساعة ناطرك إلي again as I said it's for me ساعة means uh, one hour and ناطرك is I've been waiting for you but let's break this ناطرك down as well so the, the word ناطر doesn't mean I, I am waiting no it means waiter the person who waits so basically we are using a participle here which is ناطر and if it's feminine, you would say natra with a te marbuta, natra. And here, we added natr and natra. Now, what happens when we add the ak here? It's natrak. If I'm waiting for a guy, if I'm waiting for a girl, I wouldn't say natrak. I would say natrik. So here, the person waiting, is it a guy or a girl? The person waiting, when I say natr, that's a guy. And... The, if the person waiting is a girl, you would say natra, as I say. So let's try to write four ways of saying this so you don't get really confused first, so that we can, we can get rid of the natra, natra, natrik, and then we can focus on the ele, elak, eli. So basically, when I say, as I said, natr, look here, natr, written natr in, uh, in Roman letters, that's a waiter, I don't mean the waiter in the restaurant, no, the person who waits, natr, that's masculine. And if it's feminine, you will say natra with the te marbuta. Natra. And here, I you don't say natra. I drop this. We don't need to say natra. We say natra because we added the te marbuta. Now, when I'm adding the ak in the end, or let me change the color. For example, when I'm adding the ak, when it's masculine, I'm saying natrak. Simply, I'm adding the ak. But when I'm adding the ak here, I'm not going to say natrak. I start pronouncing the te marbuta, and I start saying natritak. Natritak. So natrak, if a man is waiting for a man, natrak. Natritak, if a woman is waiting for a man. And natrik. If a man is waiting for a woman, natrik, and natritik, if a woman is waiting for a woman. So, again, as I say, these mean literally waiter, the person who waits, but we really no, don't mean the person who waits, we mean I've been waiting in this case, okay? So, if I look at ele se'a natrak, the way I'm actually saying this is, it's for me, one hour, for me, one hour, waiter <laughs> for you, which means it's been one hour that I'm waiting for you. All of this natrak represents that I'm waiting for you in English. And the ele se'a means it's been one hour. So in Arabic, you're saying for me one hour, which means it's been one hour. Ele se'a natrak, it's been one hour that I'm waiting for you. Let's look at the second sentence. إلي يومين معلقة عهل غنية. Let me repeat. إلي يومين معلقة 
هلغني Now here I used إل for me يومين two days It's been two days But again I don't mean for me two days It means it's been two days إل يومين معلقة معلقة is the feminine form of I'm stuck معلقة ع I'm stuck on literally هل means this and غنية song إل يومين معلقة ع هل غنية It's been two days that I'm stuck to this song, which means actually it's been for me basically two days I'm stuck uh, to this song. So in Arabic you are saying I'm stuck on, which means I'm stuck to this song, which means I've been repeating this song many times, okay? So, إلي ساعة ناترك إلي يومين معلقة عهالغنية If you're a guy, you can say معلقة عهالغنية You simply drop the تي مربوطة Okay, let's explain here we're using the Roman letters to make sure both those who can read Arabic and those who can't read Arabic understand. So, إلك سنة مجيت على لبنان. إلك سنة مجيت على لبنان. Again, for you, one year. جيت is you came. مجيت is you didn't come. A Lebanon to Lebanon. You're saying on Lebanon, of course. It means to Lebanon because a can also mean to. Elak sene majit a Lebanon. It's been one year that you didn't come to Lebanon. So elak sene again for you one year, which means it's been one year for you that you didn't that you didn't come to Lebanon. Um, let's go to the next sentence. Adde or Addish, they are the same. Adde, how much, and Addish, how much. You can use them, you can use either one of them. So, Adde or Addish, Elik, Mazerte, Lebnan. Adde, Elik, Mazerte, Lebnan. There should be a question mark here, by the way. Adde, Elik, Mazerte, Lebnan. So, how much for you, feminine? Zerte is you visited, Mazerte, you didn't visit Lebanon. So here, I'm literally saying how much for you, you didn't visit Lebanon, which means how long has it been that you didn't visit Lebanon, okay? Again, as usual, it, not, it never means for you in this context. How long it's been that you haven't visited Lebanon, which means how long haven't you visited Lebanon for? Maybe that's how it translates into English. Let's look, okay, of course, and if it's masculine, you say mazirit. Not mazerte. So, adish elak. You, you change the elik into elak. Adish elak mazert Lebanon. Adish elik mazerte Lebanon. Feminine. Adish elak mazert Lebanon. That's masculine. The next one is elu jamaatin aad or aad. You can pronounce either one of them. Elu jamaatin aad or aad bilbet. Elu for him jamaatin two weeks. So, Jama is one week, Jama'atin is two weeks. Two weeks. Elo Jama'atin, for him, two weeks. A'id or A'id bilbet. So, A'id again is a participle that's masculine. If you want to say it in the feminine form, you add the temar buta and it becomes A'ide or A'ide. I like to say A'ide instead of A'ide. So, for him, two weeks, that he's the sitter. At home, بالبيت. In Arabic, you say in the house, which means at home. إلو جمعتين إعد بالبيت. It's been two weeks that he is at home. Again, I don't mean for him two weeks. It means it's been two weeks that he is at home. إلا شهرين مريضة. إلا شهرين مريضة. شهر means one month. شهرين means two months. مريضة is the feminine form of sick. إلا شهرين مريضة for her two months sick literally that's what you're saying which means it's been two months that she is sick إلا شهرين مريضة and if it's a guy you would say إلو شهرين مريض you drop the a and you say إلو so إلو شهرين مريض that's masculine إلا شهرين مريضة that's the feminine form now إلنا زمان this one really memorize it because it's very very commonly used in Lebanon and when you see someone and you haven't seen them for a while you say to them 
even if you're just alone and you're talking to to whoever and you're on your own, you say "Ilna zaman ma shafnek." For us, zaman means a long time. Ilna zaman ma shafnek. Shafnek is we saw you. Ma shafnek, we didn't see you. Ilna zaman ma shafnek. For us, a long time we didn't see you. Of course, again, it doesn't mean that. It means it's been a while. We haven't seen you, so you can say it even if you're on your own. So you say "il nazamen ma shifnek" if you're talking to a guy, and if you're talking to a girl, you say "il nazamen ma shifnek." So it's "ilna." You use it as "ilna" for us. Of course, you can say "il zamen" for me. "Il zamen." In that case, you can change the "shifnek" into "shiftak" because, of course, if you change the "ilna," which means for us, okay. Uh, to ele, which means for me, you all, you also have to change the shifnek because shifna is we saw, shifna is we saw, shifnek is we saw you, so um, shif shifet is I saw, so shiftak is I saw you, so ele zaman ma shiftak, okay? So let me repeat, elna zaman ma shifnek. It's been a while we haven't seen you. If you're talking to a guy, elna zaman ma shifnek. It's been a while we haven't seen you. If you're talking to a girl, now if you want to use the feminine, uh, the the singular form, you say "ele zaman, ele zaman ma shiftak." If you're talking to a guy, and "ele zaman ma shiftik." If you're talking to a girl, okay. Memorize the sentence. As I said, we use it a lot in Lebanon. Um, and usually the person replies by saying, "Oh, kent mashrul," or like I was busy, or something like that. Okay. Now the next one is "ilkun shahren bil bed." Ilkun for you plural shahren two months bil bed. It's been two months that you plural are at home. Again, literally you're saying for you plural two months at home, which means. It's been two months for you, plural, that you are at home. Now, the next one is Elon Fatra Mechtfiyin. Elon Fatra Mechtfiyin. Elon means for them. Fatra means a while, a period of time. But here in this context, it means a while. Elon Fatra, for them a while. Mechtfiyin. Mechtfiyin is. Let me break it down. Mختفى is the singular form. Mختفى. Mختفى is disappeared masculine form. Mختفى. And if it's feminine, you say مختفى. Disappeared feminine form. Okay. And it's not a verb. It's a participle as well. So when you say Elon fatra mechtfiyin for them a while that they have disappeared, which means that they that they haven't literally disappeared. Of course not. We just mean that like we are not seeing them. It's been a while and they are, haven't been visiting us maybe or we haven't heard anything from them. So we use mechtfiyin disappeared in the participle form, the plural mechtfe in the masculine form and mechtfiye. In the feminine form. So here, elon fatra mechtfiyin. Why? Because mechtfiyin is the plural, and then elon is they. So if you want to use mechtfe to talk to a guy and tell him it's been a while you've disappeared, like I haven't heard from you for a while, you would say elak fatra mechtfe. It's been a while for you that you've disappeared, basically. And mechtfiye, mechtfiye. Uh, I wrote it wrong. Wait, let me write it in, with a better handwriting. So, مختفيه إليك فترة مختفيه. It's been a while for you, feminine, that you have disappeared. مختفيه مختفيه. So, إلون فترة مختفيين. It's been a while for them that they have disappeared, which means we haven't heard from them for a while. إليك فترة مختفي. If you're talking to a guy. إليك فترة مختفية. If you're talking to a girl. Now, in the next few examples, I will use إلي إلك and إليك with a different meaning. I'm not going to use these from here onwards. I'm not going to use them in the sense of 
it's been a while for you. I'm gonna use it in the in the more a bit closer to the sense of um, for you or you have. Okay. So the next expression you will understand what I mean in a second. The next expression is ma elak ma'e, ma elak ma'e, or you can also say ma elak alayi, ma elak ma'e or ma elak alayi. So here, what are you saying? You're saying literally, elak for you, ma elak, not for you. It means you don't have. Ma'e with me, literally that's what you're saying. You don't have with me, or you don't have on me. Alayye. Of course, you don't mean any of that. You don't mean you don't have with me, or you don't have on me. But it means you don't have a say on me, kind of. Which means it's none of your business. So if you say to someone ma'alak alayye, it's like you are telling them don't interfere in my business. So if I'm doing something and uh, you tell me stop doing this, why are you doing this? So when I say ma'alak ma'ay or ma'alak alayye, it's like I'm saying to someone mind your own business. Sometimes we can ask this as a question. So instead of saying ma'alak alayye or ma'alik alayye, I can say shu'alak ma'ay. Or شؤلك علي Of course, I don't say it as softly as I'm saying it now. You can say it in an angry way. شؤلك معي Or شؤلك علي Or شؤلك If you're talking to a girl, of course. So شؤلك معي Or شؤلك علي Has exactly the same meaning of this. But instead of saying it here, here you're asking it. Which means, why are you doing this? You have no right to interfere in my business. Okay? What have you got with me or what have you got on me basically okay which means it's none of your business don't interfere now here i also used elak or elik of course you can say both um when you want to say to someone okay let me first read the sentence or the question kif elak ain or kif elik ain so when i'm saying to someone literally how with you and I, I mean here, how do you have an eye? Of course, we don't literally mean how do you have an eye, but it's like a way to say to someone, how don't you feel ashamed of doing what you are doing? Okay, so I don't know why we, we use really the word I, like how do you dare basically, but we use the word literally I, how do you have an eye to do that? Or kif um, elak, literally how for you and I to do that, which means how come you are not ashamed or embarrassed and really like somebody is doing something really shameful and they're not even ashamed. Okay, of course, sometimes you can use it as a joke. Okay, so that's kif elak ayn. Now, uh, in another context, you can use it to say to someone, you owe me something. So let's see what we say in that case. We say, إلك معي ميت دولار. إلك معي ميت دولار. So you notice here how I read ميت. I didn't say مية. So on its own, 100 is مية. But when I'm mentioning the object with it, دولار, I don't say مية دولار. No, uh, I say ميت دولار. So that's how you count it. So for example, if I want to say... Uh, 100 tables. So alone, I say miye, but with when I mention the object that I'm counting, I have to pronounce the tema arbuta in a way that I say meat, meat taule, for example, 100 tables. Okay. So when I say to someone, if I'm talking to a guy, elak mai meat dollar, literally you are saying for you with me 100 dollars. Which means, I owe you $100, or I have to give you $100. It could be you personally owe the person $100, or maybe someone else uh, sent money with you to give to someone else. For example, when I travel a lot from London to Lebanon, or from Lebanon to London, and somebody wants to send money with me, I can call my friend and say, Elak mai mit dollar. And, you know, mit dollar, oh my God, these days in Lebanon is like a big fortune with everything crazy going on in the economy. Okay, so إلك معي ميت دولار if I'm talking to a guy and if I'm talking to a girl I say إلك معي ميت دولار you have with me uh, 100 dollars but I'm literally saying for you with me 100 dollars and the last question the last question is هاي دي الشنطة لإلك so here I used لا I could have also just say إلك هاي دي الشنطة إلك but we can also say لا إلك it's not wrong. So, hey, this shanta ilak. You notice I'm not saying hey, dil shanta because the sheen here is a sun letter. So, I have to uh, drop the l sound and pronounce it hey, this shanta. Hey, this shanta la ilak or hey, this shanta ilak. This bag, 
for you, which means this, is this bag yours? So here it's it's correct. We are using it more like in the literal form. And if I'm talking to a girl, I say hey the shanta elik or hey the shanta la elik. And if I want to say yeah, it's mine. I say e ele, or I can also say e la ele. E ele or e la ele. Now here I'm using it with the la, but here I can't say la ele se anatrak no. Or la ele yawmain ma'al a'ahel ghniye. No, la ele ksene. No, I can't say it this way. So here I have to only use these without the la. But here, because really I mean it a bit more like in the literal sense, I can say la ele for you. Okay, or ele. Now, I want to add one very, very, very important detail and open up your ears because it, it requires some concentration to explain this. Now, all of these sentences that I used in the sense of it's been or have been, okay, and until here, basically, up to here, okay, we can use them in a different way. We can add sar before them. What does sar mean? Sar literally, literally means it happened, okay? But uh, in this context, when I use sar, it has nothing to do with happened, uh, with happened nothing. So it just uh, repeats the same meaning of all the sentences, but with sar. The meaning doesn't change. So let me, see, let me tell you what I mean. So for example here, ele se'a natrak, for me, one hour that I'm waiting for you, which means it's been uh, one hour that I'm waiting for you. When I come and add here sar, I don't have enough space, so I'm going to try to write it so slow. When I say sar ele se'a natrak, I'm saying literally, it happened for me one hour that I'm waiting for you. All of these don't make sense in English, but I'm trying to break it down literally so you understand what I mean. So you're saying it happened for me one hour uh, that I'm waiting for you, but of course you don't mean that. So when you say anatrak or sar anatrak, they both mean exactly the same mean the, the same thing, and they both mean it's been one hour that I'm waiting for you. Here too, you can say sar You see, this sar is fixed. It doesn't change, and it's not conjugated when you put it before ele elak elik elo. You know when you conjugate verb to happen in, a, in another context, when you literally want to mean to happen, you can conjugate it. Anasurit, I became or I happened. It also be, means became, by the way. Anasurit, intasurit, intisurte, huwesar. Here, it's all sar from here till the end. You can't say surit or surte when you're using it with elak, okay? It's fixed. You only say sar. So let's repeat. Let's repeat the same sentences using sar. Sar ele se'anatrak. Sar ele yawmain ma'al a'ahel ghniye. Sar elak sene majit al ibnain. I keep forgetting to read the Roman letters. Let's follow the Roman letters for those of you who don't understand this, the Arabic script. So, adde sar elik. Of course, here I put it before elik. Adde sar elik ma zirte libnain. Sar elo jma'tain a'ad or a'ad bilbeit. Sar ela shahrain marida. Sar elna zaman ma shifnaik, sar elkun shaharain bil bait, sar elun fatra mikhtfiye. No, you see now I kept saying sar, 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 but I want to even take this further because when you say it sar like that, it feels even unnatural the way I'm pronouncing it. We pronounce it almost as if this sar has become part of the ele. And the a sounds, we don't focus on it. It almost becomes like sar. So here, instead of sar ele, I can pronounce it sarle, and this i is even disappearing. It's becoming sarle. You see what I mean? Let me just clean my my screen so that you don't get confused. Um, let me just show you better. So here I can say instead of sar, as I said, I can say sar. I can make it shorter and drop the sound of the i. Sarle. Sarle. Sarlak, uh, adde sarlik, adde sarlo, adde sarla, uh, no, not adde sarla, eh, sarla shahrain, sarlna, sarlkun, sarlun. You see? So let's read the whole questions with sarle, sarlak, sarlik. So, sarle se'a natrak, 
صار لي يومين معلقة على هالغنية صار لك سنة ما جيت على لبنان أدي صار لك ما زرت لبنان صار له جمعتين قاعد قاعد بالبيت صار له شهرين مريضة صار لنا زمان ما شفناك صار لكم شهرين بالبيت صار لهم فترة مختفيين Yes, so that was everything about Sarli, Sarlak, Sarlik, and I hope everything was clear. I don't even know how to check your questions. If you have questions, let me try to open this um, YouTube uh, browser to see if I can see your comments here. It looks like I can't, I don't know. But if you have any, any, any questions, it's fine. After I stop this live stream, you can leave them in the comments comment box below and I will make sure to answer all of them okay so for example to end this um, to end this video I'm gonna say um, if it's been three days for me that I didn't put a video on YouTube I can say video YouTube it's been three days for me that I didn't put a video on YouTube but now I am yeah now I am but it had been three days so video YouTube Okay, of course we can also, oh my god, should I give you this detail or it's going to be too confusing? You know what, let's just do it. Now, if I want, if I said to you, Sarli, Sarli, Tlitti yem ma hattayt video on YouTube, right? That was Sarli, if I still didn't put the video on YouTube. But now that I put the video on YouTube, you know what I can say? It had been three days that I hadn't put a video on YouTube by adding just can before everything. So I can say, كان صار لي ثلاث أيام ما حطيت فيديو على يوتيوب. It had been. Why am I saying it had been here? Because now I already put the video. It's no more correct that it's been three days that I didn't put a video. Now I put the video, so I have to say it had been three days that I didn't put a video. So to all of this, I can add كان. كان صار لي ساعة ناطرك when he arrived. Okay. كان صار لي يومين معلقة على هالغنية and now I'm not listening to the song anymore كان صار لك سنة ما جيت على لبنان and now he is in Lebanon the person أدي كان صار لك ما زرت لبنان we understand that the person is in Lebanon now you see what I mean كان صار له جمعتين قاعد بالبيت it had been two weeks that he he was sitting at home and now we understand that the person went out Okay, so by adding the can, you change it from it's been to it had been. I hope this is, this is clear. But again, if you, if you have any questions, you can leave them in the comment box. And I hope I can see you tomorrow or the day after or in three days. If I say tomorrow, most of the times I'm not appearing. So I better say in two or three days, okay? Yalla, I'll see you soon. Shufkun Ariban. Yalla, bye.